Good day and welcome to today's sermon. My name is Pastor Lawrence and it's always great to be with you. Today we're talking about spiritual success, but let's pray first. Father, thank you today, Lord, that we can talk about this very important topic, Lord, talking about spiritual success. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us to understand and in the end be successful spiritually. And I pray that in Jesus' name. It's always good to be back with you and today this topic spiritual success. Now if you google this word how to succeed you will find that there are 250 million results telling you how to be successful. And if you look how to succeed books there are two, more than 2 million books on, on Amazon and Google alone. And then you can find all these books on how to succeed in law school and how to succeed as a leader and how to succeed without really learning. This is quite an an interesting book. <laughs> and then how to succeed as a bookkeeper, how to succeed as an immigrant. That is um, something that I can use. Well, I'm not an immigrant, but kind of. And how to succeed with thinking. Well, what an interesting topic if you can understand how to succeed with thinking. So all these things is books being written on how to succeed and then you how to succeed without thinking. Oh, there's another one. The first one is with thinking and then without thinking. Just imagine that. It sounds strange, but sometimes, you know, I found that if you don't think and you just do, you sometimes um, look back and think, wow, I did this without really thinking this through and it worked. And then you have how to succeed in the game of life. Very interesting. I think that would be a nice book to read. The next one is how to succeed in writing a book. Now this one is important to me. I've written a book and it took me two years. I'm literally sitting down in a coffee shop every day just showing up and writing. And then just after that I made this person online you know this podcast where he talked about how you just actually record what's in your mind on a voice recorder send it to somebody they type it for you you edit it and you can write a book in 90 minutes now i did that with my second book my second book took me not 90 minutes but maybe two or three days um so yes this is um this is something and then how to succeed no matter what life throws at you well what an what what a great topic for a book this would be and then you have how to succeed in romance for men only so for um for our men yes definitely there are these books and then how to how to succeed being yourself just think how great it will be if you can just be 100 percent yourself don't care what anybody thinks and um, very interesting topics about how to succeed and then how to succeed with women revised and updated hmm interesting so yeah i think you get the point today's topic is about success and how to succeed now success mentally you know um cross over to religious um, if you think about these books that you can find and they are not all good don't read them it's just to let you think about how people also take these worldly concepts and try to put it into our spiritual life your best life now become a better you it's your time see yourself successful thinking right thoughts set your mind for success and then others, eight steps to create the life you want. This is the successful family. That sounds like a good book. That would be great. These eight steps to create the life you want. Also interesting, but I don't believe in the eight steps and the nine steps for this and that. I just believe follow the Bible. That's what the Bible says. How to succeed at being yourself again and win the world without losing your soul. That That's, that's a nice book. Uh, Destined to Rain, The Secret to Effortless Success. Interesting. Simple Suggestions for a, for a Sensational Life. So these are all books that you can actually buy when it comes to the Christian faith. And don't misunderstand me. I am not against um, success in life. You know, I also believe that you need to be successful. I mean, just the fact that you... Um, watching this video or sitting in this church means that you've been more successful than 
a lot of people that I personally um, have seen in Africa. You know, I've been to Africa many times where there is no electricity, there is no Wi-Fi, there is no nothing. Those people live in little mud houses that they made by hand. And but in their eyes, they are successful. I think sometimes they are even more successful than us. They're definitely more joyful. If you look at those African kids, how they play with just a tire and a stick. Or I remember when I was young, how we made cars from from wire, you know, <laughs> wire and coke tents and stuff like that. And it was happy days. It was su successful days. I'm not against you know being successful in life i just want to put our focus today on getting into heaven means success by the end of the day that is success i don't think it really matters or cares what else in life happens i think it is well no i know it's the most important thing that we will be spiritually successful and this is what this is all about and i just want to start with a quick story that i just thought of as i talked about this i remember when i was young we had this this old car and the one day we went to the beach you know it's a beautiful um camping site right next to the beach in south africa it's called sudwana now we went there with our old car and i remember as we pulled in i was amazed by the success of the rich and famous <laughs> there were these big four by four cars pulling up there you know these trucks with boats you know bigger than the house i lived in before you know it's just the biggest boats and all these rich people that send their teams ahead of them and you know they pitch a whole town of tents just for this family to arrive the next day and to go fishing with this massive boats and you know all these things and then i um saw the big hotels where all the people lived and yeah we were with our old car with a little tent camping right next to all these rich and famous people and i was laying in my tent and looking at this these successful people around me and thinking i would love to one day stay in 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 the hotel over there or something like that and um, not many years after that my father got promoted and promoted and you know my father got that big 4x4 vehicle that i was dreaming of and maybe 10 years later we went to the very same beach and we actually didn't stay in a hotel no it we took it to the next level we rented a uh, actually like a beach house and we were staying in this beach house and um, as i laid in in my room that night i was just looking to the ceiling and think but this is exactly like my house back in pretoria where we lived at that time and i was staring through the window at the at the people camping next to us and i was so longing to be back in the tent with you know the smell of barbecue and you know a barbecue party over the fire and that whole thing and then when i could thought about the tent or the or the beach house i really i wanted to go back to the camping <laughs> it was just interesting for me you know this thinking about how um about success you know when i looked at these people and thought oh that must be so amazing so i hope all these um book titles and my little story just put the introduction for today now god wants us to succeed if you think about joshua you know joshua 1 verse 1 to 8 after the death of moses the servant of the lord it came to pass that the lord spoke to joshua the son of nun moses assistant saying moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over the jordan you and all these people to the land which i am giving to them the children of israel every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon I have given you, as I said to Moses. Isn't this the most beautiful promise that God can make to anybody? That every place that you, that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I, I, I have given unto you already. Isn't this the most, uh, one of the biggest successful verses there is? No man shall be able to stand before you 
not just for a week or two, no, all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you and not forsake you. Brothers and sisters, as I read this verse, I get so excited because I also want to apply this to our lives. Just imagine everywhere you put your foot is given unto you and no man shall be able to stand before you. And I, and yes, he talked about no man, but in our case, I believe it is also the enemy, that no enemy, and I, I'm talking about the demonic forces that attacks us. No one shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. What a beautiful promise. I believe that even today, because Jesus died, God is with us more than he was with Moses. In Moses' time, there wasn't the blood that covered his sin. In our time, we have the blood of Jesus. So God looked to us through the blood of Jesus as perfect. God promised, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. What a beautiful promise. And I would say an earthly promise. Because here God talked about um, earthly success. That Joshua would do all these things and that God will be with him. And I was just wondering, um, you know, if he kept the law of Moses then all these things would happen. And I was wondering, if we can keep the law of Moses, can we have the same advantages? And as I thought about that, I just realized, well, the law of Moses is gone. It is being paid for. It is done. Jesus came with, the, with, with his cross and with the blood and with everything. And Jesus said, I didn't come to remove the law, but I come to fulfill the law. So the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ give us, I think, all of this that God promised to him and much more. Because now we also have the word that says everything works for the good for those who love Jesus. Everything. Just imagine what a beautiful insurance that would be. If I can tell you, listen, if you pay me this amount a month, I will make sure that everything will work for the good. <laughs> and um, we have that insurance. The Bible says everything works for the good. Where I this week went through some interesting experiences at my workplace with my boss and where I had to sign a new contract. The contract wasn't favorable. The contract that he offered me for the second term or the third term with him was not good, not good at all. And I talked to him about the things that I don't like and he just said, I don't care. Just, um, no, I'm not going to change the contract. Um, just sign, sign on, on the dotted line. And as I thought about this, I just smiled and realized this is not good. This is not looking good, this contract. But the Bible says everything works for the good. Everything works for the good for those who love Jesus. So I live by that insurance. And I know, although I signed a bad contract in my eyes, it will work for the good. Just the reason why I'm in South Korea quickly is, you know, many, many years ago, I started a business. I borrowed money from the bank. The business failed. The bank were calling me. And I needed a job. And um, it was a bad situation. I lost everything in, well, in that instance. And um, as I was looking for a job, Freddie told me about the job here in South Korea. I applied and two weeks later, or three weeks later, I was on the plane on my way to South Korea. And I've been here 15 years. And brothers and sisters, believe me, I would not leave my family. I would have not left my mom and dad and brothers and sister and the whole family behind to come to South Korea. There was just no way. Um, but I was enforced by the bank. I was enforced by the debt I had to pay back thousands and thousands and thousands of rand and um, it was very it was a sad moment but 
you know, to leave my country. But if I look back, it worked for the good. It worked for the good. If I, if I, if I talk to my friends back home and see how they struggle to find a job, how they struggle to survive, how they, how their life stand out, I said, God, this worked for the good. I'm, we just have that insurance. So let's continue. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Now he had to follow the law word by word. He had to follow everything that was written in the law of Moses. And there's a lot. We know the Ten Commandments, but there are a lot of other things. You know, if you go and read the Old Testament, you should do this offering and this offering. And then if this happened, then that happened. If there's mold in your house, you should do this. And if it doesn't go away, you should burn it and on the clothes. And the clean stuff and the unclean stuff, I think it was, I just think it's humanly impossible to follow all these laws. And now the Israel people, or when I went to Israel, they even took it one step further. Not, I mean, this is not hundreds of years ago. It's like 10 years ago when I was in Israel. I was surprised to see that the elevator stops on every floor, on every level on a Sunday. And I asked them why, and they said, because pressing the elevate button is work. You're not allowed to work on Sunday, so you're not allowed to press the elevator's button on a Sunday, because that's work. Can you see how far human beings take this thing of following and observing the law to do according to, to all that is written in it? But the good news is Jesus came, and Jesus did. All of this, Jesus fulfilled the law, and just the fact that you believe in him, just the fact that you rely on him, that makes you successful. That makes you like a Joshua, that everywhere you put your foot, um, where is that? Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to the fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous. I'm preaching to myself today. Be strong and very courageous. Because we keep the law, because we do everything perfect? No. <laughs> I think it's humanly impossible. Because Jesus paid the price. This thing that Jesus did, this, this um, you know, salvation and dying on the cross and giving it all. You know, I think it's like a diamond. If you look at a diamond, Every time you look from a different angle, you will see a different reflection. And so it is as I talk with you, brothers and sisters. I mean, I'm just at the first verse. There are there are hundreds of pages left on this on this sermon. But just as I go through this first verse, it just came to my mind so beautifully that yes, we have all these promises of success here on earth. Um, through the blood of Jesus, because we believe in him. Isn't that beautiful? And I think that is the reason why we will for eternity be able to sing, Holy, holy are you Lord God Almighty. That's just one of the songs I think we will sing in heaven. Um, it's just beautiful. God himself uses the term success, and that means by which to accomplish it. Now, Paul reads the end of his life. And in 2 Timothy 4, verse 6 to 8, we read, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. This is very in important, brothers and sisters. I have kept I have kept the faith. You know, as I said, as I read this, you know, it just came to my mind. Sometimes life does what it does and things go wrong. But, you know, people tend to walk away from the Lord. I've heard this many times. But I want you to keep your faith. You know, just in the last week, I had three bad I had I had bad news from three sides. Okay. <laughs> Number one was um two days ago. I had to re-sign the contract, and the contract was really, really bad. Number two, 
I got news that my father went to the doctor, removed something from his face, and they are testing for cancer. Number three, last night my mom called me. She had back problems for for a few years now. And she told me last night that she will go um, this coming weekend, next weekend, for a very big back operation. And um, yeah, she's been for three or four, and we've always lost her during the last operation. So for me, in my little life, it is a lot of things coming from different angles that made me really sad and really depressed, or it has that ability. But you know what? I've learned here that Paul says, I have kept the faith. When these things come, I just draw closer to the Lord. I mean, where shall we go? As I told you last week in the previous video, when you lost everything, like a job, where will you go? What will you do? And don't walk away from the Lord. When all these things come over, over, over us and happen to our lives, I want us to draw closer. Yes, we can ask why, why, why? But I don't think that's what we should do. I think we should trust the Lord that everything works for the good. And that will make us spiritually successful no matter what. As I told you last week, I was laying on my sister's floor, sleeping there after losing everything. But I was successful in the Lord. No, not in physical terms. If I looked around me, I just saw destruction. But in my heart, <laughs> I was successful. In my heart, I felt the love, the joy, and the peace, and the hope of the Lord. And that is just beautiful, even in this time where I'm not sure what will happen to my father, where I'm not sure what will happen to my mom, and where I'm not sure about this contract. You know, Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd. And I love that about my shepherd. You know, the Lord leads us at a way where there is green pastures and still waters. And the Lord prepared a table in front of of our enemies isn't that beautiful that in this next few weeks where an enemy came against my father with possible cancer my mom with a big back operation my boss with um, unreasonable contract and in the midst of all these enemies the lord is preparing the table i can just see him preparing the table and you know the thing that i love is toasted cheese <laughs> I love the cheese. And um, the beautiful thing is I once had this dream of Psalm 23 where the Lord prepared the table. And when I opened, you know, the, the when I when I when I looked at the table, it was full of toasted cheese. And it's just a beautiful dream that I had because the Lord knows I love toasted cheese. My point is just in all of this. Yeah, Paul says, I have kept the faith. I want us be to be, be like a magnet. When these things come against us, pull closer, pull closer, run to the Lord, run to your hiding place. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. Brothers and sisters, this is success, where the Lord will give us a crown of righteousness. I mean, and this is not only to Paul. No, he said, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. Who will love God's appearing? It is us. You know, we are going on with life and doing things and whatever. But there will come a day where we will go to the Lord but the end of our life already will come back on the clouds. And this is what it is all about. Let's just read this again. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. A crown of righteousness, brothers and sisters. This righteousness, it means eternity. It means the gift of salvation. And what is more successful than by the end of your life, get this crown of righteousness, where the Lord says, welcome to my kingdom, welcome to heaven. Um, there's a place that I've prepared for you. Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Jesus is preparing 
I don't know, a place for, for you. What it is, we don't exactly know. But Jesus is preparing that. Now, I think as the Bible says, you know, don't let your hand, um, let your sin, cut it off or pluck your eye out. It's, I cannot imagine what it is to pluck your eye out out or cut off your hand but i think when you come to eternity and you see what um what it is to be with the lord and what it is to be in hell if you compare those then your eye means nothing your hand means nothing eternity is not just like we think now you know as i said if i if i take a pen and i make a little dot on this wall and I draw it, you know, lines and lines until this whole, until my whole room is covered. That dot is now. That is the 70 or 80 years we have on this earth. The rest is eternity. So, yes, you can have all the money in this world. You can have all the cars and all the great things in this world. And you can be very successful. And then by the end of your life, if you... Um, if, if you don't have the Lord, if you don't have this crown of righteousness, what then? What, what can you do? You cannot take your wealth with you. It will not help. So make sure, like, like a Paul, that you have Jesus. And I don't say you should go and you know sell everything and have nothing in, in life. That's not what I say. I mean, if you've been blessed, you've been blessed. If you've been successful, you've been successful. That's wonderful. But also make sure, firstly, make sure that you will get this crown of righteousness. And that's only through Jesus. Well, how beautiful this is to think about everything I just said. And I want you to take a moment and evaluate your life. Evaluate not your your life on this earth. Yes, some, some of us are blessed. Some of us are not blessed. Some of us will be blessed. You know, it is not about that. I want us to just come back to this very, very simple truth. What does spiritual success mean? It means this one thing, that you have Jesus in your life. Well, that's the beginning. And then after that, there's a lot more. You know, living a joyful life, having wisdom, having all these things that God promised us. And just make God everything in your life. You know, as a teacher, when my students arrive early, early in my class sometimes they arrive like one hour before i start and i just think you know why do you come so early you know i'm busy preparing or sometimes i just need this little quiet time before everything starts before you know all the activities of the day start and why why do you come so early why do you want to talk to me <laughs> teacher teacher and you know and they talk to me and they make a noise and i get irritated you know and but God is not like that. God is totally the opposite. When you go to Him, when you go to His throne room, when you talk to Him, when you love Him, He is happy. It makes Him happy. It's totally different than in my case. You know, when the bell rings and the class starts, yes, I'm there. But before that, go and play it out. Don't come and make a noise in my classroom. This is how I feel towards my students. But this is not God. God says we can come boldly to the front room on a daily basis. He's waiting for us. You remember the prodigal son? How the father was looking for him and waiting for him day by day? Exactly. Exactly the same with us. The father is waiting for us. The, the father is looking for us. And spiritual success lies in this one thing where you answer the call and where you spend time with the lord and when where you talk to him um i try to but most of the mornings here in in our house i just switch on i listen to a sermon i listen to some worship music whatever and it's a beautiful time with the lord that i have here when i do it sometimes i don't do it sometimes i just get busy and, um, you know, but the days I do it, it is so beautiful. Well, I hope from all these little nuggets about spiritual success, I hope you got something today. And I hope you are encouraged to look at your life differently. Yes, you have the money in the bank, you have the, everything that you need. It is true. But look outside of that. Look 
look behind the money in the bank and look at yourself and look at your spiritual life and take a break if you need to take a break in south uh, in south africa we had this ad that says take a break take a kit kat i want to say that take a break and take the bible <laughs> spend some time with the lord and make sure that you will be successful by the end of your life because that will be true success and on the other hand if you're unsuccessful that will be true unsuccessful that will be devastating but i know and i hope and i believe that through the lord and through jesus through our faith in him uh, we will be successful spiritually let's pray father thank you today for this beautiful time that we could talk about successful being successful when it comes to our spiritual life and lord i pray for every brother and sister watching this video today lord that they will be blessed lord and i pray that they will become successful in everything they do but above and beyond lord please help us to be successful in our spiritual life lord draw us unto you i pray for a hunger uh, a new fresh hunger in every heart that's watching this video for you and for more of you lord so that we can um, be successful lord when it comes to our spiritual life more and above and on top anything else and i pray that in jesus name amen well my name is pastor lawrence i had lot and lots of notes that i wanted to share today but this is how it went and I believe this is exactly what the Lord wanted to, talk, to tell us today. And I hope you were blessed and go and be successful in your spiritual life just by this. By following Jesus, loving Jesus and um, trust in him. Believe what he did for you on the cross and that will make you uh, very, very successful. Thank you for watching. Until next time from me, Pastor Lawrence. Goodbye and God bless you.